Hey there, Jory here, and welcome to my portion of this year's Delta Games Festival Royal 2022. Yes, back again, third year running for me, and of course, I find myself again in a southeastern route. This time, taking a look at the recent release Victoria to Dover plus Black Friday's line. Um, came out about a month ago now, if that. So, our sub today, one Sierra 50, is a London Victoria to Dover Priory service. Where we're picking up at Faversham and continuing the rest of the way, stopping at Selling, Canterbury East, Bexbourne, Addison, Aylsham, Snowdown, Shepherd's Well, Kinsey, and Dover Priory, where this service terminates. So we'll jump a cab, set train up, and pre ourselves for our departures today. I must say, I've been quite busy here at uh, Faversham, as it would be indeed. So, let's set train up. We need to make sure that we are in forward. Make sure we do that, make sure the is set. Train in forward, clear the AWS. Let's the marks the lights to daytime. Train brakes are set. We should be departing in approximately. So we depart at 16.58. So I thought we'd have a behind schedule, but hey ho, it could be worse. Um, yeah, so once here, 5 0 service from London Victoria to Faversham. Sorry, uh, sorry, right now. Uh, London Victoria to uh, Dover Priory. We've got about nine stops ahead of us today. And about 45 minutes to do it in. As ever, of course, we're using Third Rail's map, which is the little map on my lower right over here. Third Rail's map, free to download, third party tool. Just lets you track all your train sim routes and save them online. Kind of like a logbook for your train journeys. Worth the download, free to download, so why not? So, next up we'll be selling, then all stops to Dover Priory. Reset our brakes. That power three into the train. Nice, nice, gently start the train forward. Stay departure out. Three seven five coming on the other side. In terms of routes, so I say this is the recent release of Dovetail Games Victoria to Dover plus Blackfriars run. Came out about a month ago, if that. I've got to say, the little detail throughout, certainly one of the uh, nice ones that my, this uh, Power Plants to offer. Everything from the, uh, from the scenery, the buildings, the foliage, just the whole sim, the route looks really, really good. I did a run recently heading into. Where did I go to? I went from. I first started just outside of London, head up in towards um, Blackfriars. I did a run to kind of outside London into Blackfriars, and uh, even just kind of there, looking at the route scenery. I mean, as you guys know, I travel a lot around the UK, and being a Londoner, I do quite a lot of uh, passenger runs out in South East and uh, South West trains, so it's part of that I am quite used to. Okay, it really is a, it's a grand little scenario, this. And the 465, the network, of course, being one of my favourite trains in the, um, in the UK. And the 459, so this is the new version network that we now have in Train Simulator. We did have the original 4652, which came with the older Train Sim World Southeastern routes. This is based off of the model on Train Sim World, and it just looks that bit better. I mean, the cockpit modeling looks fantastic, especially high resolution for textures. It just looks better, feels better, and just overall, it's a grand, grand recreation to train in real life. Very shortly, we'll be slowing down to stop at our first station at Selling. So arriving at Selling at... So our best arrival time is 17.04.25. At the moment we're looking to arrive just on time, which is always good. And if yes, of course, your networker has got your classic uh, horn built in. I say, I really like these networkers. I'm like, I've got a 465, actually, a 466, technically, uh, horn model on my shelf right now, just in front of me. My 166s, my 165s, 166s, 365s, 465s, and 466s, my uh, favourite rail stock in the UK. Although, it's a shame that the 365 got retired by Great Northern 
last year, although I believe it's the East Kent Railway. Someone check that on the um, comment. Is it East Kent Railway that uh, actually saved one of the old um, trains as well? Not for running, I'm afraid. It's going to be converted to like a restaurant and classrooms for schools to use for railway knowledge, but better than scrap people, I guess. The, the old happy trains. The actual smile, by the way, of 365s, an air vent. So the original trains network didn't have an air vent for the drive cab, which made it very uh, stuffy to drive. So essentially, they've just added the um, ventilation to improve drive comforts. Start applying our brakes and slowly move into a halt first station. Right, so as we stop at selling, let me have a look at the station as well, because again, leather detail in these newer train sim routes, phenomenal. You go back to some of the older routes in train sim, it's a case that they had an asset pack, and they stuck to an asset pack wholeheartedly. There's no way you can get anything extra on top of what you got. With these newer routes, it just... I mean, so much more room for uh, extra bits of detail, and it just really, really works. Like custom platforms, custom footbridges, buildings, it just looks phenomenal. So we added a waypoint. This is a station selling. So another thing I quite like doing actually with the um, Federal's map is I just look a little note where the uh, stations are when we stop. It doesn't actually affect it in any way, but it's just nice to nice to note things down, get it all in detail. So, train doors are closed. Fly power, next station, Canterbury East. So, as we start to accelerate from selling, we need about a throttle notch 3 for this. I need to use the full 4th position until we get to speed, really. And this address will be to Canterbury East, and really on this line, it's only about four or five minutes it will take between stops. That's for the most part, you are serving regional stations in this uh, part of the southeast of England and Kent, which isn't the most unpopulated area of the country either. There are quite a few communities down this way, so these trains, southeast trains, do pretty much form the uh, backbone for communities down here. As his speed is going to down, drop down to 55 very shortly, so we need to accelerate too much further beyond this water right now. A couple of short times coming up as well, and then drop down to 40 very shortly as well. Uh, going back to why the last October, because as you guys know, as some of you guys may know, so those who follow me on Instagram and other social medias, you know that last year I did a lot of travel around the UK. So I went up to Scotland, went up to like, the Outer Hebrides and the um, Shetland Islands, went around uh, Northern Ireland a bit, went to Wales, went to Cornwall, went to the other cities. So I did a lot of travelling in the UK last year, Channel Islands of course, which is kind of the UK but not the UK. Um, did a lot of travel in the UK, so... Oh gosh, it's a bit for a tiny little bit. Minus 342 for 800 points. Oh my word. Unforgiving route, this. Gee. I'm going to go that fast. There's 3,000. Oh gosh. Well, <laughs> that's my score route for this run. Unforgiving. 4,000 for that. It's a sacking right there. Um, <laughs> sorry. That score just threw me off. Um, I was saying, yeah, um, did a lot of travel in the UK last year. And so, one that I did one day was I started off at London Victoria, uh, took a train out to. So, I started off at Sheppey. From Sheppey, went down to Faversham. Faversham then just went all the way around the coast of the UK, southeast coast of the UK, through Dover Priory, through. Um, and just started off at Broadstairs, Broadstairs to Dover, Dover to um, Folkestone. Walked down to the Folkestone Harbour train station, of course, well, that's preserved there, and then went back up to St Pancras on high speed. And uh, I've got to say, I mean, certainly one of the things about the UK and just kind of running on the trains is the fact that you can just sit back, relax, got the whole country going, one left and right hand side. And you have to look back at the passenger view, just sitting back, relaxing, there's all your passenger back. It's just 
just, I've, I've always enjoyed Train Travel War. Ever since I was wee tool, it's just always enjoyed riding train. Regardless where you're going to, I had another friend out in South London, so he used to ride commuter trains out of there as well. A lot of uh, odd journeys around taking the old British. Well, it wasn't really British Rails back then. I'm not quite that old, I'm afraid. But uh, since back in the days of National Rail, you never know. I think they changed the Great British Railway too, because I've, of course, worked in National Rail myself. Work at a uh, railway station, I'm not going to say which one. But uh, yeah, I've always enjoyed railway. Fair enough, a lot of people know me by aviation and train sim, that kind of on my flight sim and all that kind of stuff, but. For me, trains have always been that kind of that one step I never really, never really fell away from. Making a very good time for Canterbury, actually. It must be about 30 seconds or so early on my arrival. Charleston just to our south as well. She lines start to uh, converge from another. So I remember what's my attention for the, uh, the whistleboards. Seed increase up to 90, down to 70 again very shortly. You do get a lot in, that in the UK as well, regionally. You get a lot of speed limit signs that kind of just go up. 200 metres later, back down again, like, you put a sign there. I'm not going to get much acceleration out of it. Again, using the thing at the bottom there, so down to 70 very shortly, down to 40 a mile or so after that. Up into a southeast region of the UK. Plane. It's a very beautiful bit of country, and again, just the scenery in the sim as well. Just, just kind of look out the window, see what goes to the side. I think I'm breaking for this one because I'm not going to lose any more points over what I've already <laughs> lost. Not that minus 4,164 is any way near recoverable for a scenario. That is, I'm afraid, long gone. But hey, we're here for the moment. <laughs> Whatever moment's left, that is. Right, very shortly, we'll be arriving at our next station, which is Canterbury East. Canterbury is the main station in the uh, city. Canterbury is getting a few services quite local off of that. Right, that's down to 40. Then going to merge with the, I believe the southeastern main line I'm merging with now. Which is the line that comes out of uh, Canterbury West. And that line comes up from uh, from Orpington, which would be a Charing Cross and Cannon Street service. Mainly Charing Cross. Cannon Street gets a few departures on South East and kind of towards the um, outskirts of uh, South East, but mainly Charing Cross. And of course, Blackfriars. Blackfriars is actually the southeast. Technically, on a technical level, Southeastern is uh, sorry, Blackfriars is Southeast Station. But operationally, it's mainly Thames Link. I mean, you get one service or so every two hours at Blackfriars from Southeastern. But for the most part, if you go to Blackfriars, it's all Thames Link, Thames Link, Thames Link, because Blackfriars is a Thames Station. That being said, I believe. It's not southeast. It's back when Connex used to operate trains at the southeastern. So Connex being the predecessor for the southeastern and southern and a few other uh, railways as well down South England. Yeah, and I'm sure those who live in South England will know Connex and uh, shudder to the name. Um, they actually have their headquarters at Blackfriars Station. I mean, this was back when Thameslink was uh, known as First Capital Connex. This was back when first operated the company. Going way back now, about 10 15 years now. Um, yes, first couple of techs operated the company and ran that alongside uh, Great Northern. Southern, I believe, was a separate top at that time, since merged now to form GTR. Um, yeah, so they used to the headquarter out of Blackfriars, but then they changed with the introduction of Southeastern. I believe it's now at London Bridge. Well, not London Bridge, but kind of that little bit outside London Bridge where all the fancy offices are. We missed the four star. Forecast up marker, but we'll just push the fix tonight because why not? <laughs> That'll do. Right, hit the brakes. Very good progress so far. Just mark it on the old map Canterbury East. While we're here, just 
I can look down from the uh, oh, signal box. Oh, let's uh, plus eight. It's a beautiful old route. This uh, Victoria Dover line. Well worth a look. Well worth a look. <laughs> Total Kent magazine. Living the Kentish stream. <laughs> I like that. Yes, big. Doesn't say what kind of big, but big. Experience luxury. Quick test drive today. No, that's a classic train sim. I like that. That's the old, um, well, it's an old Range Rover model, you can see, but that's an old, an old, old advert. Some modern southeastern poster. Just the branding removed, I see. Very good. So you can see they, they put a lot of work into station stuff for games. They put a lot of work into them. They do. Look great, it really shows, it really does show. Right, so next station is Beckersbourne. Beckersbourne on frames, we're not going to get much out of the way of points there. We did get 100 points for a good stop, but we still want another 4,064 to recover. I'm afraid these two have uh, just missed their train. Sorry, next one's in about an hour, I think, on this line. The next station is, well, Beckersbourne, so it's Beckersbourne. Uh, Addison, Aylsham, Snowdown, Shepherdswell, uh, Kinsley, and Dover Priory. Yes, the one bit of the southeastern route that I cannot pronounce any of the names for the stations. Ooh, and the tilt here, another thing I'll point out. So, you see that the third rail kind of jumps from left to right throughout the route? That is down to train constant tilt, consist of tilts. So as the train goes into turns, it tilts slightly. And fair enough, the 4065 isn't actually a tilted train, as such as like the 395 Pendolino, sorry, 390 Pendolino, 305 is the um, second speed train. Sorry, we went a bit too fast there. Punch that severely. Um, yeah, so not a 390 Pendolino or the. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. Does the 305 tilt? I don't think it does. I'm trying to think of another tilt train in the UK. There aren't actually many, I must admit. And um, yeah. Trains still tilt regardless because that's just my sense of gravity where it works and country and it's forced left to right. And so what train what Federal does is it kind of switches sides. So depending on how or which direction the train will tilt, the line will change sides to ensure that there's a strong connection from the uh, Federal shoe to the train. So if I can kind of get a view of the Federal shoe, there you go. So that's what's the um, little bit down here where it's kind of connected to the bogey. Just a little metal device that just runs off that third rail. And so depending on the way the terrain tilts, that will change side on the uh, on the cant turn. So that's why the uh, third rail changes side so as the trains uh, tilt. Of course the stations, the best way is to have that uh, third rail as far as path as possible, which will be down the middle. But at turns where it needs to move. So I think that's the, uh, the other railway designers have got in mind. Uh, next ball coming up very shortly, so we'll start slowing down for that. We're about 11 miles into our run so far. Which we're about uh, 20 kilometres from uh, Faversham, so making good progress. Happy it's all a little while to go till we arrive. 15, I'd say actually 20, 20, 20 minutes or so until we get to the Dover Priory. 20 minutes for destination, so actually we're not doing too bad time at the moment. You can see, so between Elsham and Snowdown, about 2 minutes. Snowdown to as well, that's about a 4 minute journey. About 3 minutes for, between Addison and Elsham, so yeah, it's really coming quite close between stages at the moment. I think our new goal of mine as well. Can we try and beat minus 5,000 points? As in, not to go beyond that. Because <laughs> I'm sorry, but that, that, I mean, even that speed that I did right there, that's about 300 points uh, minus. How we managed minus 4,000 on the um, little bit just coming into, uh, or coming out of Canterbury East was mental. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I was hoping for a better scoring round this, but. Obviously not. When it comes to the end of the route, we have looked through the um, drop down of all the penalties. I'm gonna kind of com we'll compare that penalty to the rest of them because that's like, whoa, was I going that fast? <laughs> there you go. 
I can't force the car stop marker now. I'm going to actually that slightly because my braking is terrible. Eh, it will do. It will do. Back spawn. Since this station now used to have a, an original short platform, but at some point got extended. So you've got concrete pillars and a concrete floor holding all in place. Old platform, new platform, old platform, new platform. Mainly stuff you'll see on Thameslink uh, stations these days, so I know that Mill Hill Broadway was that. Actually, I remember actually going through Mill Hill Broadway and actually upgrading the um, station itself. So going from kind of 8 car length to 4 12 car length. It's quite an obvious uh, difference there between where the old platform used to be when the, uh, the new one ended up. And actually, I remember going through Hazel Hunter as well. When I read that one for the Crossrail Elizabeth Purple line, um, that was what I was going on. Going from Paddington to. not South Thor, I was going to. Maidenhead. I was going to Maidenhead for an event, and um, yeah, I remember the train stopped to Hazel Harlington. I don't know, there's loads of diggers on the uh, other platform because we were running on the fast line all the way, which was very unusual at the time, so we actually got to platform one. Very rare. Um, yeah, so, stop to platform one, and you just look out, there's loads of work, and loads of diggers, and they just extended the platform to fit the new crossrail trains. For about 20 or so minutes now, making good old progress. See, there has it been 90 now, and that should stick for the majority of the service now. So, at this point, it's 90 miles per hour all the way through to Dover Parry. There'll be a few moments to slow down, but it's actually not enough to drag service out anymore than it needs to do. There's about three minutes between us and them, as shown. And again, it's going to get shorter and shorter. So looking at one again, five minutes to Shepherd's Wells Kinsey, four snow down to Shepherd's Well, two Elsham snow down, so that's a very quick shot. Uh last stop, so Kinsey to Dover Priory, that's five minutes. Four six five. Either has a top speed of there you go, seventy five miles per hour. So at this point, really, it's a case of just yeah, stick it, drop to position four, max out the train, and see how fast it can go from there. So we are going what seventy six point one. Maybe the fact that this is a very flat bit of track, slightly downhill, ever so slightly downhill, but it's downhill as we uh, get closer to the coast. Start applying some brakes. Starts going out for our next stop. Right, so we're going to see the next two stops on the, uh, the old radar there, as you straight down to Elgin. As for approaching stations, you are looking at about 30 miles per hour as you enter up, and that's confirmed to me by a person who now drives trains for a living. Well, still in training as of about a week ago, they're brand new to the uh, mix. But uh, in the old training centre, one little event to one little price to kind of drive in the old proper big train sims, and uh, yeah, fair play to them. Most of the uh, most of technical questions and all the basics of how train driving works. So you approach about 34 e miles per hour, 2030, going through uh, at least approaching the yellow signal. Roll down into the stop marker. We are nice and early, of course, so I need to really force braking. There we go, welcome to addition.
see what was originally in our uh, railway freight yards. Or potentially an old railway uh, repair yard, that. Definitely not a train building. You can see what train would have entered at some point in the past. So we depart at 23. Nope. 25. I've probably just dropped it from the uh, actual route. There you go. So depart at 20, 24. 26, 27, 29, 29. Uh, 20, 32, 33, 37 to 38, and then 44. Don't need to go right too much. Next station just around the corner from us. In fact, it's like one mile away from us. I wonder, what is the shortest distance between two uh, national rail stations? That's what I'd like for you guys to throw up. What is the shortest distance between two national rail stations in the UK? I mean, this is certainly going to be up there. One mile. I'm trying to think. Uh, actually, no, sorry. <laughs> There'll be a lot of short stations. I mean, the two Canterbury's aren't too far away. There's, um,. In fact, I know Jeff Marshall did that, didn't he? Like the, short, the shortest train service is the shortest day of the year. It wasn't Stourbridge. Um, that's gonna annoy me now. You guys in the chat, you're in, you're in command. What is the shortest distance between two stations in the uh, in the UK? I'm too busy driving. And as you guys know, can't text and drive. And I presume operating the train a little more than just uh, just driving. And again, go back to the uh, scenery from about earlier on. Still, some sort of nice. Beautiful train sim scenery I've seen in a long time. And that Delta Games, it looks absolutely fantastic. This the foliage, the trees, the scenery. You want to have the ground mesh kind of digs into the ground where the station sits. Just fits together so nicely. It's grand. It's grand. This was on the uh, road bridge. There you go. I've got the details outside station. There you go. So you got um, Ashton signage there. So free access, fire self grove, platform one, train to London. Hmm. Not quite sure if this is a uh, step for some frights. Ah, ah, no. Ignore that. Sorry. Yeah. Down the. There you go. Down the ramp. And station. There you go. So free access. Through the gates. And now the train towards London. On the other side, on the other hand, mm, no, accessibility not quite there yet. And again, talk about accessibility at UK railway stations. So that has been a, an ongoing topic for quite a bit of time now. The problem with the British Rail Network is that a lot of the railway lines are now 150, some areas are almost like 200 years old, looking at Manchester Liverpool. The problem is, back then, accessibility wasn't quite in the forefront of everyone's minds. As a result, a lot of the old rail networks don't quite hit the, uh, on the standards. A lot of improvements, especially with new stations were being built, so this definitely comes a lot more into mind. Hence, you have the accessible car on the 37, sorry, 465 on South Eastern, marks by a little bit of magenta stripe. And it just marks where the, uh, where the disabled toilets are, where the Floor is kind of open up for passengers as well. It's kind of where it all sits uh, together. On a high speed train, a 395 um, Javelin. If you look at the front of the train, there's like a little. On one side, it's smooth where the nose is, and on the other side, a little bit of a knobbly, bobbly bit on the base where the nose is. If you've got a little bump with the yellow marking on it, that's the accessible carriage. 
if it doesn't have the marking, then that's like says by carriage, so that's how you know I'm truly 95. And then the other type of trains, the gentle line, just kind of marks all the doors. Not sure about the um the new ones though, the 707s, because they're not southeast and update. Well they are going southeastern, I think Southwest Trains are now keeping seven of them or something like that. They're just throwing a few uh curveballs there, but yeah, I believe those are also in Southeastern well they they follow jav the Javelin Blue scheme. Those ones I'm not too sure about the um where it all is. I must admit, I've not actually been on seven oh seven yet. Well, I have been on seven oh seven Southwest Trains, but not been on a southeastern one just yet. I'm not sure, whoops. Ah, you managed to break that accident. No. Whoopsie. <laughs> oh, he's not losing any points for it, so that's for sure. Right. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. Snow down. I'm not sure you guys have never actually had a point of interest for. Um... Hang on, let me just stop the follow mode two seconds. Ocean, never had a point of interest. Can I still add it? No. How do I add a point of interest? Ah, forgotten. No, I've missed it. We've ruined it for everyone. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. Point of interest. Can you just add a like, point of interest manually? No, I think that's long gone. No, nope, look at the menu. Ah, I've missed it. Oh, well, I've missed one. It's not the end of the world for me, is it? Next station, Shepherd's Well. Approaching three seven five. So we've got a little more of a stretch now between uh, here and next station. By stretch I mean about four minutes, but it's not quite as a uh, short cut as it has been the last couple of stops. Just gone. Speed does increase to 90 as well. Should stay that way for the uh, main bar run. Let's see our camera at the uh, next bridge coming up. Actually, let's do the railway crossing. Go on then. <laughs> Sorry, mattress. <laughs> Mattress? What's that doing there? <laughs> Alright, let's start slowing down. Shepherd's Well. Like Shepherd's Bush, it's a lot more rural. An odd side on the left hand side there. Don't think that's been used in a long, long time. Well, it's been around actually. It's been an odd freight siding at some points. Is it still connected? Or is that long gone from the, uh, the main line? I'm not be surprised that's just kind of like desolate tracks been left there since the uh, line got disconnected. Because you look around the scenery, there's obviously been quite a few old lines at some point in the past. In fact, the branch coming off of it, uh, Shepherd's Well not being a junction on the Southeast Network, it's not anymore. So yeah, Shepherd's Well definitely appears to be a. Ah, EKR, East Coast Railway. That's the one. Um, yeah, so he's in railway. They're the recipient of the uh, four, three, six, five. Converting into a classroom and other stuff. So yeah, the line's still connected there. So if they ever get delivering new trains, they can just be added. But uh, there you go. He's in railway. Nice to uh, spot them on the way in. Okay, four car stop markup. Just about. There you go, so Shepherd's Well, I right here for Eastlet Railway. 
the Eastern Railway actually one that I want to do at some point. It's a rail that I'd love to visit and actually ride on. I don't know what their open dates are, but I'll try and find where they are. They should be ah okay, so there. Yes, yeah, so here's where the actual station is. No track anymore, that's a shame. <laughs> there, so yeah, presumes the line is here. Obviously it is disconnected from the uh the main line has potentially been for quite some time. But uh, yeah, nice little detail added there. Right, forgets, point of interest. Next up is our penultimate stop, Kinsney. Kinsney, sorry. And here's an eight. That's our final stop. Stover Priory. Not about stage Dover Priory. A little bit away from the city centre. There, I believe an original. There was an original Dover station as well in the city centre, which was a terminated stop, but that closed a couple of years ago. Well, more than years ago. That closed for a beaching cutter uh, time. But um, yeah, there was a second Dover Priory station, which is a, sec a central Dover station. Priory survived. Still. Runs regular services actually is a terminating point for South Eastern. We're going to actually get to the city centre. It's a long old trek down the hill, that. What did I do in Dover? I got off the train, spent about an hour and a bit in the city. I think for the most part I ended up going, well, I went to Kex, that's for sure. And uh, bought a couple of old games. And that's it, really. Didn't go much into towards the uh, harbour. Because Folkestone was kind of my main next big destination to stop off at when I got there. Spent about two, three hours in the Folkestone, and that was after a whole day of travel. So I started off at Sheppey, spent an hour at Sheppey, then went to. So Sheppey, Broadstairs, somewhere else I can't remember. Dover, Folkestone. Did I go Margate? I went through Margate, I never realised at Margate, but I definitely went through it. I've done Margate a couple of times with a family, had no great aunt who uh, used to live at Bessa, died a couple of years ago. And once again, the scenery in this route. And don't forget, this engine now, train simulator, going back to the old days of rail work, has been going on for a, almost 20 years now? Gosh! Uh, 2000, what year is Railworks? Hey Google, what year did Railworks 2 release? Okay, Google. Fair enough, uh, hasn't helped you there. Um, yeah, Railway 2, so I've, I've got 2006 in my head, but I don't think it was quite that early. Uh, Railway 2... Uh, 2009, sorry, not 2006, 2009. So, 12, 12 years, 13 years essentially going on for now. 13 years since its uh, first iteration. As for the short distance stations, uh, on the underground, it's between Leicester Square and Covent Garden. And... It is, so it's Tower Bridge Junction to Tower Bridge Town, which is sort of, sort of strange in the UK. So it was Tower Bridge, I, was, I wasn't wrong there, it was Tower Bridge. So, short assistance on National Rail is Tower Bridge. On the underground, it's uh, Leicester Square. Right now, approaching here's Nate. I've got to say, actually, driving trains in nowadays compared to a couple of years ago, it's definitely uh, 
changed a lot for me because I remember back when it's in first release and I had the old, oh, just Great Western back then. That was what he had back in the day. Great Western Railway, he had American Roots, I think that was uh, Sherman Hill, was it? And I can't remember the German one it came with. Gives me for River and Yaw, very nice. Um, yeah, so back then you only had Great Western, so you had a 166, uh, the, uh, the high speed train, as it was known back then, 943 was just a high speed train. And, uh, oof, oof, sorry. Just gonna think about, about that. But fair enough. Again, go back to what I was saying. For an engine that's now been running 13, 14 years, the reflection on that just does look grand. It's no AAA title graphics, but got to appreciate Dr. Games, they've done a lot of its engines to keep it running this long. And yeah, your route's still backwards compatible, still, uh, still kicking in. It is grand. It is grand. Yeah, the physics driving trains back then just felt. The door's not closed yet, sorry. Ooh, sorry. Oh, the brakes again. I might even get back down below the uh, 4,000 point marker there, gosh. We have a uh, fought back of the points. Um, I was going to say, yeah, I mean, the physics back then, so much better. Driving your great ocean routes, you drive from Oxford towards Reading, and there's no stops in the way, and it's just like a long and almost boring drive. Like, man, the fact that I'm kind of now sitting here driving 45 minutes between two stations, stopping all, all stops on the way, not missing anything majorly, just. Ugh, gosh, I've been doing this sim now. So, is it 2009 I've been trying sim? 13 years of driving virtual trains. I'm still here enjoying it. Like slight flights in. I've been flights in now for what, 15 years? Still enjoying every second of it. And I don't know. I don't get what enticed me to do train sim like this. Like a simulator, it's not exactly the most exciting genre of game out there. But no matter what, I keep coming back. Like I played Grand Theft Auto. Never really went back. I've enjoyed Watch Dogs, but Watch Dogs Legion needs to complete at some point. But again, I've not really been drawn back into it. Uh, Rocket League, I enjoyed a bit of Ro Rocket League, FIFA, last FIFA I actually bought was FIFA 13, since then I just stuck to the demos, but um, yeah I've got to say nothing's really, nothing's really drawn me back as much as uh, an odd simulator has. Down to 55, ooh so we have some aspects actually. Nice and braking, potentially going to a hot very shortly. Let's break down to about 30 miles per hour. Be very close on next uh, signal aspects. Not due at Dover Priory until 42, so we are on time. Potentially just kind of warning us then that we are coming to a halt very shortly. We'll be ready to go Dover. That's down 50 miles per hour. I don't think Dover's so much a terminating platform, but certainly we uh, kill the speed there as we approach. I do not want to be setting off any trip clocks again, that's for sure. Going back to the last time I was on the <laughs> festival rail there. Came in a little bit too fast into Hoppington. Ended up sitting the uh, triple cough and stopping a little bit short. Okay, back up to a dual yellow aspects now, so we can increase speed if we want to. Probably not, given that the limit starts running out to 30 very shortly anyway. It's another one. Up to 50, straight down to 30 again. Welcome to uh, Kent's speed signaling. Um, yeah, what can I say? It is grand. Cool. Have a challenge. You can get up to 50 miles per hour and stand for 30 again without speeding. That'd be a tricky one. <laughs> ah, so that's why we're slowing down. We're now running wrong way onto the platform. So, yeah, we are turning it over. Therefore, we are going to run into platform number two, I believe this is. Yeah, sorry, platform three. 
He's trying to occupy this platform one moment. Sorry, four. Dover. Four platforms, right? Yes. I'm going crazy. Or is it three? I can't remember. Four. There we go. Four platforms. Oh, no. This one's 15 early enough. Well, there goes. Oh, we've hit 5,000. Oh, calamity. 6,000. Oh, no. <laughs> I said this route wasn't was unforgiving for its uh, speeding points there and my word we've been royally punished all right let's bring it to a halt <sighs> mm. <laughs> can't wait to see the final score of this one can't wait yeah, welcome to Dover Priory again. Another grand uh, recreation. Does look just like this Dover Priory. Your main ticket office is all in the middle. You've got your side exit for when the ticket office is closed. You've got a pub outside, which leads you on towards the main road. Follow the path. There's Dover Castle in the background. Very nice. There's your petrol station. And if you kind of go down towards the city centre, go out. Not that way. Can kind I of go out that way? Let me hit Kex. Then from there. Also have some second hand games. Well done driver, you've arrived on time and you've given the passengers plenty of time to change trains. Time to pick your feet up and have a cup of tea. <laughs> not with this score I'm afraid, I'm not. Not this score. Let's just add it to the map and let's press close. Come on. It's not punishing me! 3197, I'll take that. That's a gold star. Oh, sorry. Ah. No, sorry. You scored zero. Hang on, hang on. Let's have a look. Uh, one, zero, four, oh, 149, sorry, not 50. 49, 700 professions Dover. Chatham Mainline, Victoria Dover, plus Ramsgate. Yes. So, punish for Sweden there. <laughs> Minus 936. Yeah, that was our biggest penalty for how long have we been there? So 53 and 40 zone, 39 points, times 24, yeah, that's definitely the most punching route that speeds that. But hey, what can you say? Really, uh, really enjoyed that. So, um, yeah, that is the Chatham Mainline, London Victoria Dover and Ramsgate, plus Blackfriars. That was the South Eastern 465 stroke 9, and that serves from Fabsham at Dover Priory in Train Simulator 22. Uh, once again, thank you very much Games, for having me on board. If you wish to check along what I do as well, so I'd mainly do flight sims on YouTube, do train sims of course as well, do a bit of bottom sea, do just overall general simulators. Uh, I'm Drawyer on YouTube, so D-I-A-W-Y-A-H Drawyer, and I do streams every Wednesdays, Saturdays and Sundays, and some weekdays no matter what comes out as well. Um, yeah, apart from that, thank you very much for having me, and let's uh, continue on the show, shall we? Take care, thank you very much. And have a good one. Bye-bye.